My guest in studio this week on the programme is Shane O'Farrell from the band Crew. So Shane, how are you getting on? Good, Keith, how are you? Good to see you, yeah, how's yeah. things? Good, good, cold. Cold, yes, it is cold this time of the year, isn't it? <laughs> I know, on a, on, a, on a cold day on the 14th of December, just before Christmas. Huh? Yeah. It's, it's my dad's birthday today, so if he's listening, I'd like to wish him a very happy birthday. Very good, happy birthday to your dad. <laughs> What's his name? Patrick. Patrick, yes. Yeah. He's from just up the road here, clicking just across the green. Jeez, that's great. <laughs> very firm at man, yeah. Good stuff indeed. So um, tell us, um, how did you actually get involved in music? Oh, good question. Well, Bally Fairman comes into play again. I think ever since we were kids, we were always singing and playing songs. My granny would have us up on stage on the sofa that in the kitchen every Sunday, up in um, Ina Road there, singing songs. And everyone got their turn. So that was the start of it, I suppose. Irish Irish songs, parties, sing-alongs and the likes. Good stuff indeed, yeah. And um, you've been working hard with this uh, band over the last couple of years. Tell us how it's getting on. Yeah, Caruso is in existence four years now. Um, I suppose it came about after recording the first album and I wanted to put a name on the band or on the on the album. I didn't want to go uh, the solo route, so I said I'd go with the Caruso tag and that's what happened. And where did you get that name from? That's a good question. Um, I'm kind of one of those names that just pop. I like to tell people it came to me in the shower, but it's probably a bit weird. <laughs> but it did. Okay. <laughs> and there was just something you come up with and, yeah. and you've stuck with it ever since anyway. That's it. Good stuff indeed. So uh, tell us about this, uh, the first album that you actually made. Tell us about this. Actually. Um, the Watcher and the Comet. Yeah, it was, it was recorded in Cork in um, 2007 around that time and I'd been writing the songs for a couple of years prior to that thought I had some good songs so um, went down to record it and that was the result The Watcher and the Comedy yeah came out in 2008 good stuff yeah indeed mm. and um, tell us about your band because you were saying uh, before you come on air that you actually have like you have different members yeah and you do different stuff tell us about that how it well works. It's, it depends on the gig really you know a lot of gigs come in a lot of we play a lot in Europe so depending on the budget it means I can I can w- factor in how many people I can bring and, and I, I base the gigs according to that you know the members whoever's going to play in the on the gig will be paid so that's the yeah. way it works and you've like six or seven members all together yeah you? lined up yeah yeah very yeah, good there's six or seven Caruso people knocking around and you're the you're the lead singer and you're always around I'm always around I'm going to have to be yeah <laughs> indeed yeah um, so um, you released um, this single Freak which we've actually played a few times on the radio uh, back in November tell us about about the making of that recorded in Westland Studios in Dublin it was um, it's the first single off the new album which is almost finished and um, yeah just demoed in France and re- recorded in Dublin so it came out in, in November very good so yeah. it's, and it's opening a lot of doors at the moment yeah. which is great and as well you've been uh, able to get some airplay in some countries and you're gigging in some countries so tell us about that where where, 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 have, you, where have you got your fan base now well bef- we have a big fan base in Germany Austria France and Italy strangely <laughs> enough um, because we've gigged out there over th- since since making The Watcher we've gigged out there for for the last two or three years so built up a good reputation there and um, that's that's kind of where the focus is yeah that's really good yeah and you're you're planning gigs then for for 2012 then as well yeah there's a lot of gigs coming in for for next year yeah we've got um the netherlands france germany again austria and even romania is coming on board i've just recently come back from a week in romania doing some gigs and writing some songs so that was great too. And you've been able to get a great reaction over there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really positive. You know, they like the music. It, it has an Irish feel to it, and I suppose being Irish doesn't do you any harm. Yeah. Irish are well loved around the world, aren't they? They seem to be, yeah. I think everyone wants to be Irish as well, even if even if they're not Irish. Well if if you if you take into consideration the passport office, I think we've got sixty thousand or sixty million on, on the books at the moment <laughs> for passports. So it's a pretty hefty number. So tell us, um, how do you actually go about writing songs? Do you like to write lyrics first or music first? Or how does it come to you? Um, that's the biggest conundrum, isn't it? It, it depends. It, it, there's no structure. Whatever happens, whatever happens, you, you could be writing, um, you could be messing with a melody on the guitar, you could be messing with a melody on the vocal. That song in particular came from the lyrics. I, I, I wasn't very happy with what was happening, so I, I sit, sat down and began to pen ideas. 
and um, I had a melody there and, and it just clicked then, you know. So you kind of, I think the trick is to catch the ball on the hop, you know, and that's, that's the way I do it anyway. It, there needs to be some sort of emotive connection to it. Mm, indeed, yeah. And like, would you get I- lyrical ideas in your head and write them down or write the chords or how does it, how does that Constantly work? writing, oh. yeah. I write every day and I'm, I'm always thinking, I'm kind of, you know, I'm not, sometimes not good company because I'll always be somewhere else while I'm, when I'm talking to people, I'm always catching, oh, that's something, I'll write that down, put that down and then, yeah, as a songwriter, you're always on it, you're always on, on the making of a song. Mm. And some days they probably work out, and some days they don't work out. Yeah, they? more than more more than likely they don't work out. But it's you, you just have to chisel at that block until it does work out. Sometimes you can be very very lucky. Other times, again, it could be weeks. Yeah. But so long as you're working, that's the main thing. And some songs can click in five minutes, and then others can you can spend days and weeks and they never work. Yeah, Freak was a prime example of a really quick song that came very very quickly. But then it was just formulating the lyrics, and making them flow. You know that 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 um. That was the the formula behind Freak. Oh, good stuff indeed. Um, so tell us actually about the actual band members. Like, who are they, and how you, how did you actually meet them on, and how did you form them? Well, the funny story about th- th- this lineup is I know them since we were kids. Most of them are from from Tallow, where I'm from, in, in and around Balrody, Castle Park, and Bancroft. And they've always been playing with um, other other musicians. Um, Marty Moran is a great traditional player, and there's also. Um, I met him, he lives across the road, we went to school together. And Al Brown then on bass, he's played with Mazzy Starr and he's been on the road for the last six or seven years, so he's home. And we've always kind of said, when, when you know, whenever you're back, we'll do something. And now we've a drummer from Swords and he's only new to the circuit, but great drummer. So you kind of you kind of pull people in as you as you need them and you meet them on the road just for gigging, but I've been very, very for- fortunate to actually know the lads yeah you know. and I suppose that helps you build up relationships then with them and you know how to you know how each other's strengths when you come to playing co- concerts and stuff don't you absolutely and I mean you kind of you bounce you bounce at the same level as these people as well because they're from the same area we understand the same things and we laugh at the same jokes so when you're on the road it's easy you know you're not trying to watch what you say or where watch where you stand <laughs> yeah because you know you can slag each other and then it, it can come out all wrong can't it as well yeah yeah well I mean if if friend, I suppose slagging is coming out wrong isn't it you can just rip rip the the mick out of people absolutely yeah um, so obviously do you find it do you find it easy enough then to schedule uh, the gigs and stuff with the lads then yeah well it's all like everything else you have to work in advance you, do, you know, yeah. you're six months down the line all the time, and they they've other things on, and I back up as well. Should I need other musicians? So it's just a matter of making it work. Sometimes you can't go out with your full team, if you know what I mean. Mm. You have your subs on the bench. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like a football team. Absolutely, yeah. So you have to have plenty of uh, backup plans and yeah. stuff. Um, tell us about um, your PR, which is Josephine Nestor. She yeah. she does PR for a lot of people, but tell us um, what she's actually done to help get your music out there. With Josephine, um, obviously we give her the CDs and she contacts the right people, the likes of yourself, and puts press releases together, approaches newspapers and magazines, television programmes, radio stations, and that, that's Josephine's job and she's been instrumental in getting Freak out there in Ireland. Um, and yeah, she's worked with the likes of... Um, who did we say? We said, oh, Emperor, oh, didn't Emperor, we? Yeah, yeah, great, we great Irish band. Yeah, I think they have a band. gig on... Is it the seventeenth or something? She was saying it to me in emails anyway. Yeah, uh, great band. Yeah. yeah, they're from Wexford, aren't they? Waterford. Yeah, great band. So it's and obviously like that's that's something like she's doing really well and stuff with. So it's all about getting out there with the contacts and yeah, getting yeah, stuff it's like out. everything else. Yeah. It's just t- touching the right bases. And obviously, then you were mentioned she has contacts in some countries as well. But you have some co- contacts in other countries as well. Well. F- Funnily enough, Freak has been played in Brazil, it's been played in Spain, it's been played in Germany, it's been played in Austria. Um, I know we've got to play in the UK as well, but so it's it's getting there. Sh- Josephine has hooked us up with a Spanish um, radio station and I've been fortunate enough to have friends who have friends in Brazil, so they got it to them and Mexico City's coming on board. And it's going to be released in Germany in January, the end of January, so that's going to be exciting. We'll be over there with that. Good. 
so it's all good it's tough to promote music in december isn't it because with the christmas pe- christmas break people are not really thinking about it as, as so as much and then when you're promoting mm-hmm. it as well uh, because of the two week holiday people you start forgetting and forgetting about the music so you have to go back at it in january don't you you do you do well th- Freak was always going to be a door opener for the next album. That was the plan. We had to get to start building momentum, and it's working. You know, it's it's got re- it's got um, interest in in the states as well. So I mean, we're planning to release the album at the end of March, maybe April. So we'll have another release in February here while F- Freak is out in Germany. So it's all about just keeping them all moving, and be- we're, not, we're not looking to crack the Christmas market by no means. Shake and Stevens has that covered, I think. It's but between um, the X Factor and Nirvana and all that crack, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're never going to compete no, with those. you're not. So it's just a matter of creating your own little niche. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So tell us, um, what are you planning? Some you're obviously planning uh, gigs for next year. Uh, tell us what what the what the plan is. You've yeah, a six month um, tour, have you? Well, we do. We've got a gig next week first to start with in the the, the Grand Social, which is was the former Pravda on the twenty second of. December, that's next Thursday, and the doors are at half eight, admission 12 euro. And that's my plug in for the day. Yeah. And um, next next year, then I'm going to be starting off in, in um, the, the Netherlands, then we're into, into Paris, then um, we do Denmark, Slovenia, back to Germany, and back to the south of France, then. So it's going to be pretty busy. And that's that's all up, up until the end of May. Yeah. Yeah. So really busy stuff there yeah um, some great places online as well can't wait to get back there mm. pretty cool and um, have you any support act for the for the Dublin gig next week we've we've we do we've got um, well we've two options we're still waiting for them to come in okay so I can't okay we can't reveal that can't okay reveal them just yet grand alright so if you turn up on the, on the night you'll, uh, you'll, you'll find there yeah, you'll, you'll find there yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah um, can you tell us um uh, have you what um, in terms of gigs? Um, are there any particular artists that you've played with that you really liked, or any famous, well, we do, well-known done, artists? Yeah, I've done with? some some big. I've played with um, Damien Dempsey. I supported Ray Lamontagne in the Village about two years ago. That was fantastic. I've um, what else? I've played supported with the Mission as well in in Vicker Street, and done a done a good few gigs with Jack L also. So they were kind of the names here that I've done but it's mainly been Caruso stuff on the continent mm. you know? oh good yeah, yeah. and um, tell us um, what music do you actually like to listen to good songs just good mm. songs anything with good songs good melodies and I'm sold completely I'm there and like what artists then would, would would you listen to them at the moment I'm listening to The National at the moment um, and The Fleet Foxes so, uh, but it can vary. Whatever's good. I, I bought Thin Lizzy's um, recent one as well, live in the BBC. Loving that. Absolutely loving that. Big Phil in a fan. And then, um, I suppose the old, the Smiths. I love the Smiths. So it depends, really. Whatever comes through. Yeah. You know. So it's good. It's good rock stuff, anyway. Yeah, a bit soft, alternative. Soft bit rock alternative, alternative well. kind of good yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Tell us, um, have you got hobbies and stuff that you like to do when you're not doing the music side of things? Um, well, I'm. I love art. And rollerblading. No, I'm joking. No, I do. I do actually have a bit of rollerblades, believe okay. it or not. The odd bit, but um, no, mainly art, music, and writing is 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 where my hobbies would lie. Oh, good stuff, indeed. So if I can be, f- I, I would like to yeah, do, say yeah. hello to so my say hello um, to a few people. Do yeah, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. They're yeah. just looking at it, and they'd be, I'd be bashed if I don't. <laughs> um, I'd like to say hello to Vicky and George and the Cronins up on Ina Road. It's my granny's house. And to Lee, he's working down the road in Lee's Barbers. Brilliant, brilliant barbers. But he's just across the road from us here. So, hello, how's it going? Good stuff that's indeed, it. yeah. That's yeah. my job done so there. Hello Thanks to all your friends uh, listening in. Fantastic stuff indeed. Tell us, um, what, what's the future plans? What are, you, what, are you, uh, what are you hoping to do now over the next couple of months? Um, well, the album's going to be released in March, so that's going to determine what's going on, at, you know, for the, for the whole of the year after that. Um and probably the year following that too and continue writing I'm involved with a songwriting collective in Europe also that we travel around the con- travel around Europe writing songs in certain countries and we're looking to get that off the road tour that as well so it's tours songs writing and the likes more of the same really yeah so you're going to be mad busy anyway with that it's busy yeah, yeah. it's going to be very busy yeah indeed yeah Yeah. Um, and also yeah you have a website and stuff for people to check out as well yeah 
We do, yeah. It's www.caruso.ie and that's C-A-R-U-S-O dot I-E. And you'll get all the, the fandangos that go with that Facebook my space, your face, everybody's face is going to be on that. <laughs> and, there's, and there's probably YouTube as well, isn't there? And all there that. is YouTube, yeah, yeah, strangely enough. Uh-huh. Bluetube, it's all there. And uh, you'll have the gigs and all up on that as well. Yeah, you it's get all them. up there. It's um, Next Thursday's gig is going to be the last gig of the year for us, so it's been a busy year. And then we're back on the horse in January, mm-hmm. the first thing. And you're not going to be playing in Dublin for quite a while, is that right? Cause it's you're looking like it, yeah. Because you're going to be away. Like going to be away. You know, it's, uh, probably do a few acoustic gigs, maybe some supports and things like that, just to just to keep in with with people here. But it's looking like it's all Europe and possibly the states as well in 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 March. Yeah. So states and Canada, yeah. So Any of the singer songwriter gigs you might try out as well? Yeah, you never know. Well, we're going to be organising gigs, and if anybody's into it, um, they can contact me on the website. We're we're looking for singer songwriters to join the collective group, so we can. Um, showcase them at this new concert co- kind of sh- um, singer-songwriter night we're developing up in Tala in Rua and um, we look, we'll look, we be looking to bring r- singers and songwriters away with us on the the workshops okay. so that's is, that, is that on every couple of weeks or something or what, what, it's what on it? the, the songwriting workshop is every second week and it's um, but the trips are every three months so and the gigs will be every one month. So it's two weeks, one month, and three months. So it's it's going it's going really well. That sort of things. So that's in in Rua and Tala, is yeah, it? Yeah, that's in Rua. You get my details. Any details you need to do on the on the Caruso website. Okay, yeah. And um, so yeah, if there's anybody out there who wants to jump on board, please do. Because I might yeah, I might send some artists here actually. Do <laughs> yeah, do. <laughs> I will. We're I might do. Writers, yeah, we know yeah. we know loads of people uh, who have been on the show and who we've given advice and helped out and stuff. So definitely yeah. But that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That's what yeah. it's all about. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Well, uh, thanks, Shane, very much for coming in on the show this week. And thank you, Keith. It's been great. It's been good fun. Yeah, it's good Good to have you here. Yeah, and nice been, and really enjoyed your songs and had a good chat as well. Yeah, maybe we'll do it again. When yeah, the hopefully we'll do it again. Yeah, really Brilliant. soon. Yeah, yeah. In, in 2012. Absolutely, yeah. indeed, yeah. I'm going to go across the road now for a cup of tea. Vicky's. Thanks, Keith. Right, no problem. Well, thanks very much.